What is going on, you guys? Welcome back to another video. I'm back again. I know I said I was coming back consistently in the last video I posted, and now that's been over a month. But I promise you guys I'm back now. Short answer was I was just really, really busy. But in all honesty, not a whole lot has changed. I have gotten a few new fish, but there hasn't been a whole lot to film either. So with the combination of that, there not being really anything to really film and make a really good video on, and me just being really busy, I have not posted any new videos. But I'm back now. So since I've last shown you guys the 75 gallon tank that I set up in the last video, uh, I was talking about the fish that were going to go into it and the fish I already had that I wanted to put into it and also some additional fish I wanted to get for it. But there was one fish that is in this tank now that I did not think I was going to get. Uh, it's been here for about a month now and that's the, what this video is actually about is these fish right here. And uh, I'm going to be honest, some people are not going to like this just because of uh, kind of the general consensus that these guys can't be with other fish. But I'm going to explain to you why I did it. But I've got the Red Spot Severums in here now. I've got the Strawberry Leperinus in here. I've got the Blue Carves in here. And I've also got the big Banded Leperinus, which he's actually chilling in his log right there. We'll throw some Bloodworms in here in a minute and uh, probably get him to come out. But then there's these guys. That's right. Exodons or Bucktooth Tetras. Now, that's what the, these are the fish that this video is actually about. And the reason why I said some people are not going to like this is just because of what you hear about these guys. And you always see people keeping them by themselves. But believe it or not, they can be kept with other fish. And let me just talk about why I did this. So, pretty much about a month or so ago, somebody brought in these guys with several other cichlids that they were being kept with at the time into the store that I worked at. And this was not a fish I was planning on getting for this tank. I actually had the Buenos Aires Tetras in here. I did take them out, and I'll talk about that in a second as to why I did that. Uh, it was really two reasons. But from what I've actually heard from other people who have kept these fish before, it's that the biggest thing with them, as long as you don't keep them with fish that look like them, and they don't have really shiny scales, they're usually not an issue. They usually don't pick on anybody. And so far, that's been true in this tank. They have not messed with anybody in here. They're super active. In fact, they kind of get after each other more than anything but the Buenos Aires tetras kind of look like they do and they have really shiny scales so I didn't think that was going to be a good idea and it was also too much movement in here I've got four of these guys in here and had four Buenos Aires tetras and trust me it was just there was too much going on in the tank so I took them out now I've got these guys in here and like I said this was not a fish that I was planning on putting in the tank if you guys watched the previous video when I was talking about this tank and the fish I wanted to put in here uh, as the schooling fish I wanted it to be the Buenos Aires Tetras and some filamentosa barbs obviously I'm not going to get the filamentosa barbs now that I have these guys in here because they have very very shiny scales as well because the biggest thing with these guys is they like to nip the scales off of other fish they're not a fin nipper you know something like a tiger barb or something like that they eat the scales off of fish so uh, it really seems to be only fish that, like I said, kind of resemble them and have really shiny scales. And if you notice, none of these fish in here really have that. Uh, you know, like the Severums, kind of like a gold color. The Akar is more of a blue color. And the Leperinus are more of a dark or gold color. So, so far so good. Like I said, they've been in here for just about a month now. I have not bothered anybody. And they're really, really cool fish to watch, honestly. So with all that being said, you might be wondering why I titled the video what I titled it. And that's just because even though they've been in here for a month and I haven't noticed any issues out of them, haven't noticed any scales missing off of any of the fish in here, it's still not a really, really long time. So it could be a few months before I know if it was really a mistake putting these fish in here. And if I see any scales missing off any of the fish, anything like that, see them getting after any of the fish, I will get them out, trust me. These guys, they are pigs. Check this out, I'm gonna drop a cube of some bloodworms in here and obviously the severums and all them up there to it first, but look at them. I mean, they, these guys are pigs. They're Like I said, they're constantly moving. They do not stop at all, and uh, which kind of makes sense as to why they need to be fed a lot. So that's the biggest thing with them. Give them a tank where they have plenty of room in here. Keep them in a small little group, and uh, make sure that you keep them fed really, 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 really well, and don't have any fish in there that have really shiny scales that, like I said, kind of resemble them, and uh, they're usually not going to cause any issues, at least from what I've seen and from what I've heard from other people who have kept them with other fish. I guess the the Leperinus is cheating today because he's not going to come out, but they took the bloodworm cube down there to him and he stole it. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's that. 
Now I do still want to get a group of probably four to five clown loaches along the bottom so we have something as a bottom feeder in here. Um, and then I'm also going to be adding two Electra Blue Jack Dempsey's. Now when I get those guys, they're not going to go directly in here because they're probably going to be really, really small. I think he's about to come out here in a minute. But once I get them up to probably about the size of the blue cars, then I'll go ahead and throw them in here and that will do it. That will be literally all that's going in here besides me maybe changing out these artificial plants. Uh, that was one of the things I was talking about when I set up this tank was that for the meantime it was going to be just artificial plants because of some of the fish in here. I didn't know if they were going to mess with the live plants or not and I'm still kind of weary of doing it with some of these fish in here so I may and I may not. We're going to drop another cube in here though. Let's see if we get the big Leparinus to come out now because he is the biggest fish in here and he's going to be the biggest fish in here probably long term as well. These Severums will get a lot bigger and so will the blue cars. Yep there he is back there. As soon as he sees that bloodworm cube, he's coming out. And this guy's only about half grown as well. Now that strawberry leperinus, uh, wherever he's at, he's about half grown, but he will only get to be, uh, that guy right there, he'll probably only get to be uh, four, five, six inches at the max. That banded leperinus, he can get, you know, up to a foot or even bigger than that. So he is definitely going to be the biggest fish in here, even long term. And... Uh, Trust me, he gets he gets his fair share of food. He makes sure of that. So that's that, guys. This tank has been running now for uh, roughly two months or so, and it's done really, really well. Have not had a really bad algae problem in here. Do have some brown algae back there on the back wall, and I did have a little bit up here in the front before I wiped it off this morning. But uh, yeah, the tank does pretty darn well. I have this light on a timer up here, so it actually it has its own timer built into it. This Nicro LED, uh, so it's only on for eight hours a day. Let the blue light come on for a little bit, and that's pretty much it. Now, I wanted to show you guys this tank because this one's still kind of a project. So this is going to be the Tangenekin tank. This was a tank I was also kind of briefly talking about in the previous video. Right now, I only have one Jolita Chromis and one Lelupe in here. These are the two types of Tangenekins I want to put in here. I'm not going to do any other Tangenekins besides these two species. But I want to get more. I don't want to slam it full like it's a peacock tank or Ambuna tank, nothing like that. But I do want to get more of these guys. They're still kind of skittish. They're not showing that they're skittish right now, but that's because I'm six feet six feet away and zoomed in. But like if I come up here, they kind of spook. You see that? So, uh, and I've had this Le Lupe for quite a while, and I've had him for uh, well over a year. He's not that skittish of me, but so, but that Jolita Chromis is. Uh, but once I get a few more of these guys in here, um, I think they will be a little less skittish. Now, I am going to still add a few more of these rocks, uh, one for each of these big Anubias that is out here on the floor, so it'll be more of a complete kind of 3D look with the back part back there. And uh, the algae that was growing on these rocks has started to chill out. You can see it. there's still a light coating up there on the top part. Uh, but as far as over here on the side part of the rocks, uh, it is really, really dialed back. Still some on the Anubias, but that has dialed back a lot as well. And uh, this is actually the same exact light that's on that 75-gallon tank over there, this Nicro LED. So it has the same exact hours as that tank does, only eight hours a day. And uh, that really helps out with the algae. And obviously I could cut it back to you know six hours or even four, whatever. Uh, but about eight hours a day is what I like for most of my tanks. And oh my goodness, did you guys forget about this tank, the saltwater tank? I've not shown this, and I actually don't even know how long. It has been so long. This tank has changed in so many different ways since you guys have last saw it. Uh, but a quick update on the corals. Got some hammers back there doing really, really well. Obviously, the Duncans, I know you guys remember them. Then I've got these uh, mushrooms down here. There's one purple mushroom right there. And I just recently added these green mushrooms. I haven't fully decided on this spot yet, so I don't really know about that just yet. Uh, there's some acans that are kind of just now starting to get their stuff together. I got these and those zoas up there from from somebody, those are actually doing really, really well. Uh, when I first got them uh, roughly two months ago, there was probably only four polyps, and now there's closer to eight or nine on there. And then there's some more, there's some more zoas right there. Kind of a bad camera angle, but uh, they are doing pretty darn good as well. Little cleaner shrimp in here and one snowflake clown. That is it right now, but I do plan to add at least one more fish in here. Maybe another clown and then probably something like a, a yellow watchman goby in here. Uh, but I am planning on uh, pursuing more corals in here. I'm going to see exactly what I do with these green mushrooms. I was wanting to put them somewhere over here so they could kind of converge in with these other mushrooms. And 
I think that would look pretty darn cool, but I don't know if that is going to work because this is a pretty big rock that they're on, and I don't know that there's any good room for them to sit on over here, but I am going to still add a couple more corals in here, like I said, a couple more fish, and uh, this tank will be pretty much where I want it. So that's pretty much all I'm going to show today. Obviously, I have several other more tanks and ponds outside. By the way, the big 800-gallon pond, I would show it in this video. But it's actually green right now because the UV sterilizer, the UV bulb, uh, it went out in the filter. So I've got another one on the way. As soon as it gets here, I'll put it in. And within a few days, it should be back crystal clear. But all the fish in it are doing really, really well. I actually have a new fish in there. And uh, trust me, you guys are going to be seeing that pond and probably at some point in every single video over these next few months because it's getting really warm outside. I've gotten it down to one heater on the pond. And honestly, I could take that heater off right now if I wanted to. But... I'm, I, I like it getting kind of warm in the pond, so still having that one heater on there helps it get up there. So it would still be in the mid-70s without a heater, but it's pushing like 80 degrees, topping out there every single day, and that makes the fish in there a lot more active, which I personally like. So as soon as it gets to be warm enough, which is going to be very, very soon, uh, to where I don't need a heater to keep it at 80 degrees every single day, then I'll go ahead and take it off. I actually added some LED lights in there. They're pretty cool looking. So I'll probably be showing the pond either in the next video or the next video. And uh, trust me, the videos are going to start being more consistently. So just stay tuned. There's a lot to come. Like I said, still going to be getting some new fish for the big 75-gallon tank right here. And uh, I will keep you guys updated on how the Exodons are doing in the tank. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, hopefully half of you guys are still here by now. And uh, thank you guys for sticking with me. So with that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.